Hi, I'm Kath. My channel is Made by Kath Craft, and in this video I'm going to be talking all about a dress I made by combining two of my favourite patterns. And I made this dress for an exciting new sewing challenge and I'm going to be sharing all the details of that challenge too. Hi there, I'm Kath. Welcome to my channel Made by Kath Craft. Thank you very much for joining me today for my latest video. And I'm really excited about this video because in this video I'm going to be talking all about a new sewing challenge that I'm going to be co-hosting over on Instagram and it's running through the month of July. It's called the Sew Mashup Challenge and I'm going to be sharing all the details of the challenge in this video. And also I've made a garment as inspiration for the challenge. So I'm going to be talking all about the garment I've made um, as well. But first of all, the challenge itself, I'm co-hosting with Sally, who is Secret Life of a Seamstress. And I'm sure you follow her on Instagram and are subscribed to her on YouTube. I'll link her YouTube channel and her Instagram account down below. She makes absolutely beautiful clothes. I'm always admiring her makes. And we thought it'd be really fun to get together and set up this new challenge for lots of sewists to get involved in. So I'd love it if you would consider getting involved. And we decided we'd set up a challenge um, that involved a bit of pattern hacking because we both love to hack patterns and have a lot of fun by combining different patterns too. So the challenge, as I said, is called the Sew Mashup Challenge. And I'm going to pop the rules up so you can see what they are and what's involved. Basically, the challenge is in the month of July to sew a garment, a brand new garment, using a mashup of two different sewing patterns. And then post your make in July over on Instagram using the hashtag Sew Mashup. And at the end of July, we will put all the entries um, into the map challenge into a hat, essentially a virtual hat, and we'll draw out some winners of some amazing prizes. So we've got some really cool sponsors lined up to support our Sew Mashup challenge. So I'm going to put a list up here of all the companies who've kindly offered prizes and are getting involved. And then in the description down below, I'm going to put details of the prizes they've offered. And hopefully that'll be a good incentive um, to get involved and hopefully stand a chance of winning one of those prizes. And as I mentioned before, we're going to be selecting winners at random. So it should hopefully be nice and fair for everyone to get involved because we'd love as many of you to get involved as possible. So if you post your entries during the month of July on Instagram and use the same mashup hashtag and tag Sally and me as well, we'll be sharing your entries in our stories and that'll hopefully give more people inspiration and encouragement to get involved because we'd love as many people to join in with this challenge as possible. So that is the Sew Mashup Challenge. Hopefully it's quite straightforward. You basically need to sew a new garment using a mashup of two different sewing patterns, post your make to Instagram in the month of July, tagging me and Sally and using the hashtag Sew Mashup. And then we'll be drawing the winners at random and we'll be announcing the winners in the first week of August. So Sally and I can't wait to see your mashups. Really looking forward to seeing people getting involved and seeing lots of creative combinations of different sewing patterns. So now I've talked through all the details of the Sew Mashup Challenge, I'll move on to sharing with you the garment that I've made by combining two different sewing patterns to create a new pattern mashup. And I'm really happy with how my garment turned out and it was a lot of fun to make. I do love a pattern mashup. And like I mentioned earlier in the video, I decided to make a dress because I love a dress and I thought it'd be really fun to try combining one of my favourite skirt patterns with a top pattern to create a new cute dress. So I'm going to be talking all about it and I'll start with the skirt pattern I used for my mashup and it's one of my favourite skirt patterns and it's one that I really enjoy wearing and I've thought for a while would look really cute as part of a dress so I thought this challenge was a good opportunity to give that a try and the pattern is this one here it is the estuary skirt pattern by So Liberated it's a really nice comfy skirt pattern to wear and I think it's got a really pretty shape to it too and I'll hold it so you can see the line drawings it's basically an A-line skirt that's fairly full with this button down front, gathered waist, and the waistband is really comfy because it has a flat front, then elasticated back. So it's really easy to get on and off and you can make it with a sort of faux placket or no placket at all by cutting the front piece on the fold. It's really nice and comfy to wear and you can make it either with patch pockets or with inseam pockets. And what I like about the inseam pockets on this skirt is they are secured to the waistband as well, so they hang really nicely too. So it's a really nice skirt pattern. I've got a few different skirt versions. I've actually got one of them here to show you. Um, this is one of my favourite versions of the estuary skirt I've made. 
I made it in this lovely um, rayon fabric that I got a long time ago on sale from John Lewis with this sort of really pretty floral print on. And you can see it's got the button placket there, it's got a flat fronted waistband and the elasticated back, so it's really easy and comfy to get on. And then you can see inside I've added the inseam pockets that are secured into the waistband, so they hang really nicely, they don't sort of drag down. So yeah, this is one of my estuary skirts, but I thought it'd be a really cute skirt to a dress. Oh, and I mentioned the sizing on the estuary skirt pattern too. It has a really good size range. It goes from a size zero up to a size 30. And the size 30, the largest size, is for a waist of 48 and a half inches. But it's a really nice pattern to sew. And I kind of had to figure out for my mashup how I would combine this skirt and secure it onto a top pattern. So what I decided to do was to make a wearable twirl to start with to figure out how I could combine the pattern because I often think with mashups the most fun part is trying to figure out how different patterns will fit together and it can be a bit tricky to figure out but once you do it's really satisfying and nice to know you've kind of created a whole new garment. So I decided to make a twirl of my mashup before I cut into my proper fabric just to make sure I had kind of figured out properly how I could combine a top with the estuary skirt to make sure it all came together really nicely. So I'll show you my twirl, which is here, um, and as you can see, I've used some different scrap fabrics on it, and it isn't actually the full skirt either. I didn't have enough fabric to make the full skirt, so it's kind of turned into a little peplum top, really. But I didn't really need the full skirt because it wasn't designed to be a wearable twirl. I just wanted to figure out how I could make the skirt and attach it to the top, um, so it ended up quite neat. So this is my toile, and so this bottom bit is the estuary skirt. As you can see, I decided not to add a button placket at the front. I just cut the front skirt pattern piece on the fold instead, um, because I decided that I didn't want a sort of button placket halfway down a dress, because I thought that would look a bit weird. Um, so I've got a straight, plain front with a flat fronted waistband at the back. It's got the elastic here. And what I did to make sure I could secure the estuary skirt bottom to a top was when I made the waistband, I cut the waistband piece slightly larger. And then when I folded it over, I left a bit of extra fabric at the top because there is elastic secured here around the back of the elasticator back waistband. But I thought if I then sewed a seam onto the elastic waistband at the back, it would end up being really bulky and it wouldn't work very well. So I added a bit more space onto the top of the waistband and then I basted it along there to create a channel for the elastic and almost like a little sort of paper bag waist extra bit at the top of the skirt. And then I used the extra little paper bag waist bit here to secure to my top. So I didn't have to sew the top onto the elastic directly. There was a bit of extra fabric there. So that is the way I figured out I could attach the estuary skirt onto the top by just making the waistband that bit larger. So I had about a one centimetre at the top to use the seam allowance to attach onto my top. If that makes sense, I hope it does. So yeah, this is my toile. And actually for my toile, I used a different top pattern. So the top pattern I ended up using for my final mashup because I wanted to give it a go with this pattern. And I wasn't sure it worked quite well, so I decided to go back and have another look in my pattern stash and try another pattern instead that I thought would work better. And I'm really happy with the final pattern I chose. But the pattern I used for my initial um, twirl was this pattern here, which is the cuff top pattern by the assembly line. And it's a woven top pattern, so I thought it'd be nice and compatible with the woven estuary skirt. It's got this boat neck and these oversized elastic cuffs. And I really like the um, cuff top pattern, and I thought it'd be quite fun to try hacking it into a dress. But when I put it on, I just wasn't sure that it matched with a sort of flouncy estuary skirt. Just something about the cuff top, which is kind of a quite a relaxed silhouette, I thought didn't quite go. So I decided for my final version, now I'd figured out how to attach the top to my skirt, just to go for it and cut out a different top pattern and just go for it with a real fabric to make my mashup. So for my final pattern mash dress, instead of the cuff top, which I thought wasn't quite right maybe, I decided to use another pattern for the top of the dress. And for this pattern, I used my final version. I borrowed the top of a different dress pattern, a dress pattern I really love. And it's this one here. It is the plum dress pattern by Cocoara Crafts. And it's a really cute dress pattern, this one. It's kind of like a slightly oversized baby doll style dress with a gathered skirt, a button down back and slightly dropped shoulders. And you can either make it as a long sleeve, more sort of wintry version or this cute summery version that's sleeveless but has these really pretty ruffles added. And I really love that ruffle detail. It's the detail that really sold this pattern to me originally. And I've made two versions of the plum dress to date, and I'll pop up pictures of them. I made one version in a sort of royal blue coloured double gauze, and um, that really I think shows off that ruffle detail really nicely. And then I also made a version in a viscose that has a bit more of a drapey look to it. I'll put up that version too. And I really love wearing both those versions. They're really comfy to wear, and I just love that ruffle detail. 
So I thought with the flounciness of the estuary skirt, it would combine really well with that cute ruffle detail and make a really sort of pretty flouncy style summery dress. And in terms of size, and the plum dress also has a really great size range, just like the estuary skirt. There's a B cup version that goes from a UK 6 up to a UK 24. And there's a D cup version that goes from a UK 18 up to a UK 36. And I've always sized down when I've made the plum dress and I did for my pattern hack version too. And I've always made the size 6, the UK 6. Now that is designed for a bust of 31 inches, a waist of 23 inches and hips of 31 inches. And I'm 32, 26, 36, so I'm quite a lot larger on the waist and hips. But like I mentioned before, the plum dress is designed to be quite oversized and the finished garment measurements really show that. So the finished garment measurements for the UK 6 are for a bust of 38 inches, waist 38 inches and hips 50 inches. There's loads of room in there and I've never wanted it to be too oversized. So I've always sized down to a size 6 and I found that's worked quite well for me. And I should mention in terms of the sizing on the estuary skirt, I find that quite true to size. So I made my estuary skirt as part of my dress, the UK. US size 2 which is designed for a waist of 26 inches which is my waist measurement. It does state that size is designed for hips of 34 and a half inches but because it's such a full A-line skirt with the gathering I know I didn't need to grade out for the skirt because there'll be plenty of room in there. So those are the measurements I use for my garment but now I'll show you my final pattern mash up dress. So here is my finished pattern mash dress and I'm really pleased with how it turned out. I think it's turned into a really cute little dress. You can see the top is the plum dress bodice and I've got the estuary skirt on the bottom. And I made it in this really lovely gingham fabric. It's a really lovely, soft, lightweight, sort of summer weight style gingham fabric that I got from Simply Fabrics. And I'll link their website down below. They had this fabric available in a few different colourways. I think they are still available in a few different colourways. And I decided to go for this really pretty black and parchment colourway because I thought the black and the cream colours were really nice together. It's a lovely, soft weight. It's got a bit of texture to the fabric. You can see if I hold it up. So I think it works really well for a summer dress and it shows a bit of the detail of these little cute ruffles here. But there's a little bit of drape and softness to them too, which I quite like. I do love a bit of gingham. The um, plum dress bodice, the neckline is finished with bias binding. So I made some bias binding in the gingham fabric. I had enough to make that. And I always think gingham bias binding is really cute with a little diamond detail around it. So I think that looks really nice too on the inside. And as you can see, here's the flat fronted waistband of the estuary skirt. And I had a bit of fun by um, making the um, stripes go on the diagonal here just to break up the dress a bit and show off that flat fronted waistband detail. And I turn it around, you can see the back's got the elastic. So it's really easy to get into this dress. You can just pop it on over your head and the elastic just pulls around your body quite nice and easily. So I love the little ruffle sleeves. and I think they work really well with the flouncy skirt, the estuary skirt. And I decided to crop the estuary skirt off to kind of make it mini length because I thought that would work quite nice with this dress. And I think it'll go really well with a pair of sandals for summer or something like that. Then I'll turn it around and show you the other details. So here's the back of the dress. And I decided to keep the button down back placket of the plum dress because I thought it would be another pretty little detail for this dress. So I've got um, five buttons on there and they're just buttons I had in my stash, kind of plain black ones that I thought would tie in nicely with the black colour of the check. And I ended up lengthening the plum bodice slightly because the plum dress is kind of designed to be kind of an empire sort of line um, cut of the dress. But I wanted this dress to sit a little bit more on my natural waist. So I lengthened it slightly to bring it down towards my natural waist and then added in a seam allowance so I could sew it on to the um, waistband of the estuary skirt. Um, so yeah, and it's got the pockets too from the estuary skirt, so it's nice and practical. And as I mentioned before, they're sewn into the waistband, so they'll be really nice and they won't drag down at all. See, I'm really happy with how my dress turned out and I think it's a really cute little combination of two different patterns. And I'll put up a picture of me wearing it so you can see what it looks like on. It did take a little bit of tweaking to get just the right length of the um, top half of the, the pattern. I kind of um, basted it onto the waistband a couple of times and tried it on and then cropped it off slightly just to get it sitting just at the right point on my natural waist. But I'm glad I spent a bit of time playing around with that and I added a bit more length onto this top so I could play around with it and crop it off a little bit and get it to just the right length for me. In terms of connecting the two patterns together at the waistband here, um, I mentioned before that for the estuary skirt, I basically increased the depth of the waistband. So I had a little one centimetre extra all the way around the top that I could then use the seam allowance to attach the bodice to. And that meant because the elastic was in a channel down below, the elastic didn't get sort of um, caught in that seam allowance and it ended up being nice and flat and not bulky. So that was quite a nice simple adjustment to the skirt just to add that bit of extra depth and then sew a line of basting around just so I had essentially a seam allowance to play with there to attach the top to. 
When it came to attaching the top to the skirt, I did find that the plum dress front bodice here was slightly wider than the um, So Liberated Estuary skirt waistband. So what I did there to get them to come together nicely was I sewed a couple of lines of gathering stitches or basting stitches onto the top and I just gathered it very softly here to the point where it matched the width of the waistband. So I'll show you up close. You can see there's a bit of gentle gathering here at the front, which I think works really well. I didn't want to take in the front bodice anymore because I thought it might start compromising the overall sort of fit and look of the front bodice. But that little bit of gathering works really nicely. And then the back was really easy to attach. I basically, because it's elasticated, just pulled this um, elastic out wide to um, meet the um, width of the back bodice of the plum dress and just sewed it on like that. And then when the elastic springs back, it gathers in nicely anyway. So yeah, it was fairly simple to attach um, once I'd kind of made those few little tweaks just to kind of get it all to come together nicely. So yeah, this is my final dress and I really love it actually. I'm really glad I gave it a go at pattern hacking. I think the So Liberated Estuary skirt works really well as the bottom half of a dress. So I hope you enjoyed hearing a little bit about how I put my pattern mashup dress together. It was a lot of fun. I do love a pattern mashup. I love that you can create a brand new garment using patterns you already have. So yeah, I'm really happy with how that one turned out and I hope it's given you a bit of inspiration maybe for trying your own mashup as part of the Sew so Mashup Challenge. And I am planning to do another vlog over the next couple of weeks sharing a few of my other favourite mashups I've done in the past just as a bit more inspiration. So do keep your eyes peeled for that vlog which will hopefully be coming out in the next week or two. So yeah, that is the Sew so Mashup Challenge and I'm really excited for it. I can't wait to see all the entries this month. And I'll just summarise the challenge again. You need to sew a brand new garment using a mashup of two different sewing patterns. And then you need to paste a picture of your garment to your Instagram grid in July using the hashtag Sew so Mashup and tagging Sally and me. That is Secret Life of a Seamstress and Cathcraft. And we can't wait to see all of your entries. I'm really excited to see all the different mashups people decide to do. I think it will definitely inspire me to want to do some more mashups too. And tomorrow, make sure you head over to Sally's channel, which is Secret Life of a Seamstress. I'll link it down below because she's going to be sharing all the details about her pattern mashup that she's been working on. And I've only seen sneak peeks of her so far, but it looks really lovely and I can't wait to go and watch and find out all about it. So as I mentioned, I'll link her channel down below. Do go and check that out too. So I thought I'd bring this video to a close now just by sharing with you what I'm wearing today because I have found when I haven't mentioned what I'm wearing in previous videos that I also get comments asking what pattern it is and if I made it and that sort of thing so I thought I'd include it now just in case you're interested. Today I am wearing a dress that I made using one of my favourite and woven dress patterns of all time and it's this pattern here. It is the fringe dress and blouse pattern by Chalk and Notch. It's a really lovely dress pattern to wear and to sew. The instructions are really great on this one. And the version I am wearing is this one here. So it's the dress version and both versions have this lovely sort of dipped hem feature in a gathered skirt and pockets. And I'm wearing this version here with the button down bodice, this nice v-neck. And it's got these really cute sleeves that sort of gathered in and secured in place with tabs, which I think is a really pretty feature, as you can see here. And you can see the buttons on the front. I'll just stand up. It's kind of like almost an empire line on me and I quite like that. It's quite a relaxed, loose fit, so really comfy to wear. And the version I'm wearing today, I made in a really pretty double gauze fabric that I got a very long time ago from Guthrie Garney. I don't think it's still in stock there, unfortunately. It's a lovely double gauze. It's quite a flat double gauze. It's not a crinkly one. And it's got these really pretty pink and grey flowers with little gold metallic accents. And I've picked up the gold in all the buttons. I've gone for these sort of pretty, almost sort of mother of pearl, but goldy version um, buttons on it. And I'll put a picture up of me wearing it so you can see what it looks like on, just in case you're interested in that one. So that's what I'm wearing today. But anyway, I'll finish this video up now. I'd love it if you get involved in the Sew so Mashup Challenge. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Do have a look at the sponsors down below. Really lucky they've offered some lovely prizes and I can't wait to see all the entries. I'm hoping loads of people will get involved and it'll be a really fun month seeing all the really cool pattern mashups. So thank you very much for watching. As ever, if you've enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you give it a thumbs up. I'll hopefully see you again for another video soon. Um, do go and check Sally's channel out tomorrow. In the meantime, I'll see you again soon. Bye.